basically how to be a very good employee. If something's wrong and you at the store, that's a good way of putting that. Yes, if you're at the if you're at a job and your boss comes and asks you a question, it teaches you how to say I don't know. It teaches you to say I don't know, but I'll find the answer for you, boss. That's what a college teaches people. All right, take two. Welcome back to the Content Bebop, the home of no starving artists. And I'm here again with Mark Leary of Blurdography. What's going on, everybody? Today's topic of discussion is balancing business and art. Sounds like a good topic. It, it is, because a lot of people, a lot of artists, we get it confused. We, um, we don't understand. We don't know how to balance business and art together, you know? I agree. So you're officially calling yourself an artist right now. I am not calling myself. Okay, okay. You did just say that, though. When did I say that? You just said we are artists and we can't balance business. Oh, we're businessy artists. Yeah, I mean, okay. part artists. Yes, part. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just not, sure. you know. Okay. If we was all the way in business, we'd be doing real estate. If we was all the way in art, we'd be on the street corner painting, finger painting and selling them for 50 cent. You know what I mean? So we, we, we're in the middle here. We're trying to find a balance to where we can pay our bills, not living out of our car, not living at home with mom and dad forever. And, you know, make a living while doing something we love to do. It's all about doing what you love to do. I believe so. Uh, it's mostly about that. Yeah. Mostly about that. Not all the way. I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes you just got to eat. No, I agree. Stuff you don't like I agree. Eat but the reason why I say that is because if you don't enjoy what you're doing, it's just going to be another job. Regardless of if it's your business or not, it's just going to be another job. And you're going to have that nine to five mindset about it. I agree, but you know, see, and you know, and I know the artist people out here are going to hate me for this, but you know, me personally, I do think passion is a little overrated. I think passion is a little overrated. Why? Because I think that most, I think it's human nature to love, to be proud of something you do. I, Cause I feel like passion goes away after a while. Like I've been in love with people, a woman before. I've been like deeply in love, and it dies after a while. You know, that's just life. Nothing lasts forever. You know. Why do we think love is the exception? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say about the personal stuff. But as far as business is concerned, um, I think that passion is what's. Uh, why do I have an alarm set on my phone? I ain't got no. Way to be. That's, I don't know. <laughs> didn't even know that alone was. All right, whatever. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I did not mean for that. Um, what was I getting? But when it comes to business, the reason why I say you got to be passionate about what it is you're doing, like I just explained, is because that pa- if with what you just said that you can love something, but love dies out or that love is going to change. I think in the terms of business, if it's just you and you're just trying to find something that drives you that focus that you can focus on that keeps you going in that relationship uh is going to be the thing you're passionate about no i I see where you're going i see where you're going but i feel like passion is just i do feel like it's a little break i think you could be passionate about selling rocks if it was making you a million dollars a year you know what i mean if that was making you a million dollars a year i'm sure anyone could be very very passionate about it right but on the surface if i were to ask you would you like to sell rocks nobody would be passionate about it i mean I can, so so I, think, I I feel you, but to that I say like yeah, if no one has a passion about selling rocks, but people have a passion about making million dollars a year, and okay, I just disproved my own point. You know what? I, I feel disproved. like it's so uh, only because passion is not overrated. It's a basic human emotion that drives most things in go. life. Gotcha. However, I feel like people put too much emphasis on the pa- on the word passion or what it means nowadays because it's. No, I feel you. I can understand. I don't that. even know where I'm trying to get at, but you, no, you, I, I get it because uh, you do hear a lot, especially in our business that uh, you know when we network or we talk with other people, they always talk about profit versus passion. Uh, we even talked about it a little bit in the last episode, profit versus passion. Um, and I get your standpoint where you're coming from that sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do to make money. Uh, who cares about if you're passionate about it? If it's making you money, let the making money part yeah, be your passion. Somewhat. Yes, yes. Does somewhat. that make sense? Anybody? All right. Know. Okay. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. We'll man. find out when they start saying something in the comments. <laughs> like, what are y'all talking about? We're just confused. Y'all talk about passion, and both of y'all didn't know where to go with the points, whatever. <laughs> um, 
right. So kicking things off, man. You think people should go to college? Do I think people should go to college? Uh, and I think you asked me this in the last video we did, and I've thought about that since then. Okay. My answer is still no, but it depends on what you're going to college for. If you're going to school for anything artsy, and you're thinking you're going to learn and grow um, and graduate making top dollar, no, don't go to college. Just go YouTube University, get some Skillshare, not sponsored, get some Skillshare lessons or some Linden.com lessons, and just go from there, save you the forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars dollars $60,000 it was going to cost to go to school. But if you're going to something like for business, for like communication, something that's a broader thing that you can take with you, especially when it comes to business, um, then I say yes. And another thing I want to add to that is college, like everything else, once you get out of high school, is just another tool. And if you use that tool to just educate yourself, but you neglect the networking and just, you know, making moves and things like that, then college is not going to work for you. Um, I remember my college days, I learned a lot of stuff, but everything I learned was stuff I had to self-teach myself. Uh, from textbooks and from YouTube University. But the thing that I believe I picked up on from college was all the networking and the connections I made with people because those uh, networks and connections is what is I'm using now to stay afloat and to just get things done and do business with other people. It's not the education I received. It's the people I met that made college work for me. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Like The number one thing I learned from college was just – how to find the answer to things. And I think that's what college just teaches you. Like, you graduate high school and you think you know everything, but you don't. And then you get to college and you're supposed to learn stuff. But all college does, regardless of what you go to school to learn, is how to find the answer for yourself. Because I think, um, especially in the American education system, it doesn't do us justice or prepare us enough for adulthood. And I guess they supplement college with that, but college is just babysitting adults, I feel like, to some degree. Uh, it is, it, basically, yeah. You give your parents a chance to get away from you. Really, that's that's really what college is. Yeah, it just teaches you how to network and how to find the answer. Right. Because you get these tests and you're like, hey, man, I don't even know where to begin to look. It just teaches you to pull out a book. How It teaches you how to not be such a baby about things. It just teaches you to get up and go find the answer. Get on Google, read a book, pull out the answer. It teaches you basically how to be a very good employee. If something's wrong and you at the store. That's a good way of putting that. Yes. If you're at the if you're at a job and your boss comes and asks you a question, it teaches you how to say, I don't know. It teaches you to say, I don't know, but I'll find the answer for you, boss. That's what a college teaches people. It's so funny that you use that reference. um, because I remember when I really got into the workforce after college. Um, that was the first thing I learned just work experience was how to not say no or that you don't know, but just how to go find an answer and how to deal with a customer. Um, and with that said, you that's another reason why I feel like you don't have to go to college because you can learn a lot of the same skills by just going to work and working for somebody else. Uh, and eventually you'll be you'll make more money in the short term because you ain't got to pay tuition, things like that books. Um, but in the long term, you're going to end up being the same you're going to learn just about as much you might not be as liberal or as book smart but you still going to have the same experiences um and the same basic things you as an adult need to learn um so yeah yeah Good yeah I, yeah man yeah i am uh fifty thousand plus dollars in debt just only fifty thousand only fifty man. can we trade I came out lucky can we trade i came out lucky y'all only fifty to just learn how to Google something. That's that's really all I learned in college. I'm $113,000 in debt that because is, I chose to go to for-profit universities. Ridiculous. I went to yeah. two of them. Yep. Yep. If you go crazy. to college, just go to a local. If you ain't going to Harvard or some Ivy League or something like that and you're going to be a NASA rocket scientist, just go to some local school, save some money, get the degree. To be honest, degree only helps you make an extra $20,000 a year when you're working with somebody else. Uh, anyway, so that's the only difference. I feel like, hey, you, I, hey man, I'm with you. I got friends. We are, we are that over the hill gang, uh, technically speaking. No, 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 no. That's we ain't there yet. We are, we getting we, that up. We getting closer. Shut up. All right, my shut bad. up. But but the point is, we got friends still in college. I have friends that are still in college 
still trying to get their master's degree because oh, I wasn't making any money as a bachelor. Let me go back more into debt to go get a master's or a PhD. Maybe I can get more debt and make. An extra five thousand dollars a year. It's like, come on, y'all. What yeah, then, like, y'all really thought that was the answer. That didn't make sense to me. But I mean, but to, it depends on your field, though. But you know, we're gonna stick to art. We're gonna stick because I'm I'm getting personal. Let's stick to uh, okay. Let's stick to uh, arts. Okay, let's stick to videography, the arts. graphics. Let's stick to what we do. Does co- you know? In college, I think it depends on your field of study and who you are as an individual. And unfortunately, some people just suffer more than others. If you're one of those people that have to sit in the classroom in order to learn, you're going to suffer because you're going to have to pay way more than the average person, the the next person. Because the next person, honestly, your best bet is to get an internship, get on YouTube, just get out there and do it. Get on Fiverr, start a graphic design and, you know, I don't, you know, start a, start a gig on there or something, you know, get on Craigslist, do some little small, cheap gigs. That's the best way to learn. It's way better than getting into debt. I promise you that. It's a lot better. No, I agree. And to just piggyback off what you just said a little bit, it it does really determine who you are as a person. If you're a C student in high school, you're not going to be an A student in college. Um, it's going to be worse because you are left to your own devices a lot more. That is true. Uh, That's a good way. That's I'm a, a prime way. example of that, by the way. <laughs> um but I mean, I still went through it enough and whatever. But like, if you the type of person that's not motivated on your own or who can manage themselves well, you're not gonna be successful. That's why, like, when you said you got friends who went back for their masters, I'm like, but if you didn't find success in the bachelor's, and it does depend on your field of study, but if you didn't find the money when you got out of school with your bachelor's you just going back wasting more money i agree with you on that there's something um that i learned about when i was in school they're called professional students no matter how oh, yeah. old they are whatever they always find some money to go to school but they can't find the money to be on their own to be a functioning adult i too have friends who are in their 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s who are still in college from when they was 18 yeah uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Me so too. it's wild. It's wild. It is very wild. So let's move on. Anyway, balancing art and business because I feel like that was. I feel like we covered it. I, th- I think right. We got it. We got it right. That was good. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Because I mean, going to college is subjective, right? Yeah. But mostly a waste of time and money. Yeah. Okay. Um. And I still like from the last video. I still kind of stick by a lot of the things I said when it comes to college and balancing art and business. I still think as a business owner, you need to be what did I say. 90 95 percent business and five percent art or something pretty much yeah some i still stick by all those okay okay so with that said let me ask you this um in let's talk about this the pretty photo versus the pretty woman so you're a photographer right uh you shoot uh cosplay Right, I do more than that, but you yeah, do more than that. But that's what you brand yourself as. Right, like I brand myself as a cosplay photographer. That is I've correct. I've seen some of your work; it looks phenomenal. Thank You're you. You're really good at it. Thank you. But let me ask you this: Do you think, and we're on the subject, we're on the subject of balancing art in in business, and the subject of matter at the hand right now is a pretty picture versus um like pretty woman versus a pretty photo pretty, pretty photo being like technically masterful with the lighting all uh two to three one ratios and uh, i use the aperture 600 whatever do you think you're getting more success from the cosplayer or your technical abilities hmm that's how you described it in that <laughs> scenario <laughs> kind of gave me a different answer than what I was thinking um, because I thought you was going to go like the booty photographer, uh, the people. Who- uh, you know what? Let's let's do that. Just okay. because most people are not cosplay photographers, but right. I do feel like a lot of photographers starting out are like booty photographers. They go to the clubs or they take pictures of a flower or they take pictures of a girl with a, a nice body and they think they're a great photographer now. But no, you just took a picture of something really amazing. That a lot of people wanted to see, right? So, which in the subject of ba- balancing art versus business, like, which do you think more emphasis should be placed on? Um, as a business, um, as a business owner, as a photographer, obviously, you need to have the technical skills to make and take a great photo. Uh, you need need to be able to how to paint your subject in your scene with lights, how to adjust the lights accordingly, the rules of light, things like that. So I will always say you need to have a technical sound. 
behind that, but there's something I noticed that I wanted to address, which is why I'm glad you asked me this question. If you're a photographer, shit, sorry. If you're a photographer, even if you're a videographer, filmmaker, and your audience is just regular people who don't know what it is you do, if your regular clientele is people who are paying you to take a picture or make a video, nine times out of ten, they don't know those things that what it takes to make a great photo or video for that matter. They just think you show up, press a button, and you're done, and it's not. There's so much more to that. But I bring that up to say that you can kind of – I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be honest, if you're just dealing with the general public, you can kind of get away with a lot of stuff because if you know more than what the person's paying you, um, you know more than that person. They're not going to know it's a bad picture. Uh, Only you know and only other photographers and people who know what it takes to make a great picture will know that it's a crappy picture. So then in that sense, you got to ask yourself, do I want to have a great sounding photo so I look good as a photographer to everyone or do I just want to go make some quick money and have cheap clients and be known as the cheap guy or the booty photographer on Instagram because all my pictures look good, but it, they look good because I got some booty cheeks in the shot or, you know, whatever that just regular people think is interesting that makes a great photo. But, you, but you know, that brings up the point that art is subjective, you know. So art is subjective. What's a good photo I think is – changing you know what used to be great art or something that used to be hard to do is what made a picture great you know right nowadays your iphone is taking 100 pictures you press the button one time it's we press it one time the processor is taking like right right 50 100 pictures or something and, and putting them together together to give you the best image it's yeah it's that like bigger better uh that ah, i forgot what i was gonna say uh the oh tongue twisted dynamic range there you go dr there we go come on now but yeah it's going to give you that dynamic range it's something that if you just have a regular dslr uh you're going to have to do and bracket those things yourself to get that same image um and it's something i hear a lot if you can't out shoot your iphone you need to hang up your camera and call it a day i i somewhat agree somewhat agree um but yes art is subjective um but I think the technical science of what it takes to make a great photo, that will never change because you still need to know what how to make a great photo to appease to anyone's artistic, uh, artistic ability, rather they know what art is or not. Um, and yes, like I said, art is subjective, but if you still have those technical sounding I mean, not technical sounding. If you still have the techniques behind what can make a great photo, you can take that with you anywhere. Personally, I feel like no, I you know I I agree I agree, um, but you know to to quote Gary V, uh, the market is the market, you know like you can you can spend fifty hours setting up lighting and twenty days in post processing figuring out the 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 perfect LUT or whatever in Photoshop or Lightroom or whatever and if people the one person bought it and that's what really matters at the end of the day, it's according to business you know. Um, Hey man, if you can press it, if you can take a picture of something simple and people are buying it, uh, and it, but that's only on this subject matter that we're talking about, right? The booty versus you know, right. the pretty pretty woman versus a pretty photo. You know what I mean? As far as business, uh, in business, it really doesn't matter. We just want what's quick and easy and can make the most return. You know? No, I agree to that. Um, I shouldn't be admitting this on camera. I have some clients now who. They just want what they want, and it doesn't look good, but they think it looks good, and I just sell them that and keep it moving. Yeah, there are five Transformer movies, and only one, No Country for Old Man. I'm trying to think of a really good movie, but No Country for Old Man, any classic movie. Most classic, great movies, there's only like one or maybe a crappy sequel, but they have like five Transformer movies, and they're coming out with more. They're all crap, you know, but... Hey man, right. people like pretty stuff. You know, they like seeing stuff explode and robots and stuff. But to that, I want to say, as a business owner, I understand that you have to cater your business to the market. Right. But as a person, the market, just me personally, market is making all of us dumber. Um, reason why I say that is, like you said, there are five Transformer movies, but only one Country for Old Men. 
um people want to just be dumbed down and told to so much just the overall general population the people like us suffer we have to suffer we do suffer it's be- unfortunate i think it's a bad thing i think yeah that's what i was gonna it's a bad thing i i don't think it's a good thing that the mass general public dictates what gets made and produced and things like that because there's stuff that other people want to see that we won't ever be able to see or do because companies are going to cater to what's going to make them the most money like you said five transformers movies five plus more coming plus more coming <laughs> My goodness. Um, how many like terrible sequels and remakes they make every year in hollywood and how like maybe you get one or two new ips a year and they may or may not be good or they might be really good but you don't know because the general population went to go see all the mcu movies and all the transformer movies so this one really good movie just got pushed underneath the rug and only sophisticated people appreciate it you know i, I kind of hate that um, I, I do too, man. But again, the market is the market. If people keep paying to see it, that's what they're gonna make. Like you can't really be mad at him. Michael Bay is sub- subjective as he is of your liking. But uh, you know the the people keep paying to see him. Right. Know, these MCU movies, people keep saying paying to see him. Right. That's Please true. Please keep making them. But they're gonna keep <laughs> making them as long as people pay to see them. You know. If no, you're tired of true. seeing them, stop paying to see them. It's very you know people speak with their their wallets. You know people speak with their dollars. And to that, I have this long rant about capitalism. No, I'm joking. I'm just moving on. We're moving on. Um, but, I mean, <laughs> we all chose to live in this society um, and abide by the rules, and we all have to bear the consequences. If if everyone out here watching is saying, like, hey, your shirt's ugly, wear a red shirt, I'm going to have to put on a red shirt just to keep you watching. Right? No. I, yeah, somewhat. somewhat. I think there's a give and pull to it. I mean, there's there's give and pull to everything, but I want people to keep watching it and giving me money That's to true. sit okay. here yeah, to watch right. me. I so I gotta yeah, follow right. suit. Yeah. I'm gonna hate myself on the inside, but you know my bills got paid. <laughs> oh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many times. Just a side note: how many times I've delivered work to clients. Um, and they're like, "Oh, I like this. I like this. I like this." And everything that they want me to edit and work on looks like garbage but they want it done in their way that they like because they're spending the money so you got to cater to that client and give them what they want uh rather it's good or bad you can tell them the hey this is bad hey this is good that depends on your trust with the clientele and how they trust you but i don't know sometimes you just gotta you know bear it grant your teeth and just move on right yeah so uh I'm sure you can relate. You've- I can I can relate. I've been in these situations. I've definitely been man, I've shot everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just <laughs> use I'm, your I'm laughing. On that one. I'm laughing because I know I, I have uh shot and edited just about everything. So with that said, <laughs> I've dealt with people that um that want things that are not necessarily to your liking. But but I will say this, as I've grown and done it more, uh, I think there needs to come a time and a place where you develop a style, develop uh, a following, and they can kind of bend to you. So it's like, hey, this I is agree what to I that. do. I agree to that. So I'm not editing. I'm not going to put my name on some work that doesn't look like XYZ. Right. I shoot ABC. Right. You know? Um, that's on another topic though, because it's business versus art, a uh, balancing art and business, and that's that's more artsy fartsy stuff. Well, it's business too though, because brands have branding, you know, brands right. have you know. So I guess it's more than the same. And way. that's what I, what, what I was gonna, uh, that's what I was gonna bring up. Um, that strikes a chord with me because that's literally what I'm going through with my business now. Uh, like I said, I do cosplay photography. I don't do the same type of cosplay photography everybody else does. I do my style of cosplay photography. I know what I like. Uh, I know how I like to edit and I know how I want certain things to look. And this year alone, I've gotten new clients. I've even gotten old repeat clients come back to me and say, hey, I keep shooting with you because I love your art style. I love how you do cosplay photography. You know, I don't do a lot of big flashy stuff. I stick to what I think looks good and simple, just simple lighting techniques. And then I'll like, hey, let's add some color. Let's just do this. Let's just do that. Um but more importantly, I keep 
my shoot's fun and engaging and entertaining. Um, and people keep coming back to me because they want that experience. They want the experience with me being behind the camera and them being my subject model. They love that. Or uh, they just love my how I do my art style and my branding. So blurtography, all my images look a certain way because that's how I want those images to look. And when I have to go outside of my comfort zone to do like some graphics or some vector art for a cosplayer, then I'm kind of like, but that's not really my style you should come for me for the style of art that I create, not force me to be something I'm not. And, you know, the reason why I'm kind of dealing with that, because, like, yeah, on cosplay end, I have that. People come to me, they like my art style, but on my Mark Levy photography side, where I deal with more of the general public, I have to, they want this, and it looks bad, I have to give them that. Because that doesn't have that type of brand that I put behind, like, with cosplay photography. I just had a realization about some stuff. All right. All right. You're welcome. Moving on. So, uh, <laughs> so with that said, because I've been on your shoots, I've been to a few of them, actually. And uh, you guys, you really do have a good time on your sets. You with your clients. I've been there. It's pretty good. It's good energy. You guys are having a good time. So, I, I want to ask you this, then. So, okay. how do you balance? So, how do I write the question? So, Okay, I see how I wrote it, but how do I ask you? So, where's the gray area? Because you run a business that's based on emotion and, you know, it's, it's just a B2C business, business to consumers. So, right. you're running a business, your, your clients are the consumers. Right. Um, where is the gray area? Because do you keep everything black and white? Like, hey, I said this shoot, you signed up for, so for example, I'm not saying you do, but just an example. This shoot is a 30-minute photo shoot. We get 30 minutes. What if they show up 10 minutes late? You know, or what if they the shoot's going really good in yeah, 45 minutes? And not there. Like, where do you draw that line? Is there a line? Is that where it's something you need to improve on? Um, well, I do notice that that is something I definitely need to improve on. And um, how do you handle these things? Uh, for, for the audience, because I think a lot of us deal with this, you know, especially right. in the beginning, because you're not making a lot of money. You are dealing with a lot of consumers, especially especially most beginners are dealing right. with consumers because we're shooting weddings or right. whatever, birthday parties or whatever. You know, you're dealing with people. How do you deal with these things? Um, I like to think I have the policy bend but don't break when it comes to things like that as far as the gray area. Mm. I have a set of processes and procedures for my business. Um, you know, X, Y, and Z, if my client's 10 minutes late, this is what then happens. If they're 45 minutes late, that's a whole nother photo shoot, um, whatever, whatever. And if these lines are crossed, depending on my relationship with that client or that person, I might bend and like, okay, I really want to do this shoot. I can forgive 10 minutes, you being late, whatever, whatever. Um, or, hey, I don't want to work with this client no more because they always do this whenever. Let me go ahead and draw the line now. Up, you cross the line. Well, we're no longer gonna doing this, and you just got to move on. So I try to be flexible, bend but don't break, but don't let your clientele trample over you and make you do things you are not comfortable with doing. Um, I've been in situations where I've had clients who signed a contract and paid deposits and didn't show up for shoots at all, but then they want to come back and say, "Oh, let's just change the date." I'm like, "You can't do that. Read the contract." There's processes and procedures that go in place when you do something right. wrong or when I do something wrong. You know, we're just escalating it up to the next step. And honestly, you know, as a business, especially when you work in uh, B2C, uh, I, it's a little bit different when you do B2B because mm -hmm. you don't have to bend so much with businesses. Most likely when you're dealing with another business, they understand that you are a business as long as you present yourself as a right, business. Right. Most uh, of the time. Uh, uh, most of the time. And, you know, they already have their rules and procedures in place and you have your rules and procedures in place. So it's more easy to deal with those businesses. Well, I'm not going to say that most of the time. Um, but, yeah, you just got to, you know, bend but don't break. Uh, there is a gray area and the gray area is, is as big and small as you make it. If you try to accommodate for everybody, you're going to have a really big gray area and you're going to just keep literally breaking your back to accommodate everybody yep. to do everything. Yep. And at some point, you got to stop that and like, hey, this is my business. This is how I run my business. Literally, photographers are a dime a dozen. You can go down the street and find somebody who think they got a camera, who got a camera and they think they're a photographer. Trust me, 
I don't have to have you as a client. I will. I have 2021 has been the year I've said no to most of my business and still somehow double my profit margins because I stuck to my niche. I stuck to the things that I want to do and I stuck to a clientele and I eliminated clients. I disqualified clients in the consultation phase. Hey, they talking all this and that, trying to give me a run around already and all we're doing is just talking over the phone. I, I know I already know how this is going to go. Put my foot down. Well, I would just recommend you to somebody else who who wants to deal with it or who's hungry for that couple of dollars you're trying to give me. No, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I know I rambled a lot, but uh, no, that's perfect. Uh, I mean, as long as it's all good and that was all good, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, um, and you know, then there's gray areas where what happens when you mess up because that's happened a lot too. I've had, yeah. oh my god, I this just should be a whole separate video, um, on my channel, it should be a whole separate video. But I've gone through so many growing pains this year as a business owner, um, it's not even funny, just the last couple of months alone, just everything that i thought i knew i realized i didn't know anything i had to go back to the drawing board and kind of start over from scratch and reset up my processes and procedures uh redo how i engage with clients and my contracts and uh my the men, whole administrative side of my business i had to go back and just revamp because i realized there was something wrong and it desperately needed to be fixed for me to continue to get bigger like what um so i Oh, because you know this, you know this person. So whatever, I'm just saying. So I both got my biggest client I've ever had and lost the biggest client I've ever had in one sheet, and that mentally just messed with me so bad. Um, and then that started a cataclysm or a a, a, a cascade of other uh, mess ups I did with clients, both repeat and new clients, and that really messed with my ego, uh, my confidence as a business owner, with my confidence being behind the camera. I went from being a very confident photographer at the end of October to like never wanting to pick up a camera again because I messed up so bad with what my happened? clients. Okay. Um, I had a client that this person referred me to. Um, we nice. had, oh, so you know who it is, you know. I think I do. Okay. Um, we did the shoot after a couple of reschedules, we did the shoot and the shoot was great. Or at least I thought the shoot went well. Um, edited the pictures at the very end, uh, cause I have a three week process for editing pictures for big shoots like that. Um, there was a breakdown in communication, not my client's fault, not my fault. Or it wasn't my fault. It wasn't the client's fault, but it was a breakdown in communication. Well, it was somebody's fault. I think I want to blame Gmail, but. I'll just take it as my fault because anything dealing with communication, you just got to take the L on that yeah, as a business owner. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, it was the last day before I had to send the client the pictures. We was emailing all day. I sent my last email. I waited, never heard anything back from her. Six days later, she sends back this very angry email. Um, but that was very professionally written. <laughs> um, <laughs> like you've gotten those emails that are so professionally written, you can just feel the anger. Yeah. Um, like I they, have. yeah. So I had one of those. Like when they got stuff in red in the email, you know you've done fucked up. <laughs> oh, you've gotten that before. Mm, okay, I've never gotten that before. I've never had the email come back to me from a client, and like a lot of stuff is in red. <laughs> um, so I didn't know how to take that. But like I, I delivered the pictures. They was just late because of the breakdown in communication. I was supposed to send them that Monday. I didn't send them till that Friday because I was waiting for her res her reply. Um, because I needed to make sure that she was satisfied with how everything was. I didn't get a reply from her. And then when I did, everything was in red. I saw the, the date stamp and everything. That's why I say Gmail messed up. Because I'm like, how did she send this email when I sent my initial email? Whatever. But breakdown in communication. I just had to take the L for it. She was happy with the pictures, just not happy with the execution of the delivery of the pictures. So, so she was just mad about the taking too long. That's what she was mad about? Yeah, that's what she was mad about. Um, and the, she did bring up the breakdown of communication. And like I said, I had to take the L for it, even though I did send screenshots and showed her what I saw on my end. Um, she just took that as being unprofessional, and I've never heard from her since. Um, I'm sorry to hear that, man. It's I didn't fine. Know about that. It, it, I didn't want to 
Well, now the world knows. So. <laughs> yeah, now the world knows. But but I mean, I'm glad because I'm gonna be honest. I've kept this in. Um, you know, and it's affected other clients. I had a cosplay client uh, a week later, uh, like doing the same process of working on this big client's pictures. I was also working on these other clients' pictures. Uh, he wanted me to do stuff I wasn't comfortable with, and instead of just telling him I'm not comfortable with how you want me to do this, I was like, well, let me just do it because I need to do it anyway. And I suffered because, and this was the artsy part of me, when it came to that second shoot that I messed up on, uh, I messed up because artistically I didn't like what I was producing. I did what the client asked, and I did not like the results, and I knew I wouldn't like the results when the client asked me to do it. And instead of just expressing that to the client, I was not very professional about it and kind of left right. them hanging. Okay. And that one I understand. That one's all on me. But I still haven't got the pictures yet, too, because I just don't like them. Like, I just don't like them. They just don't look good. It's not the, the pictures look fine, but all the extra edits and stuff he had me do made the picture look terrible. Did they pay for them? Yeah, they paid in full. Huh. Well, there we go. Artists versus uh, artists in balance in business. Uh, you gotta, yeah, that's important. Personally, that's, that don't bother me. If you paid, here you go. Well, the reason why it, it bothers me, um, I know I say art is only 5 to 10% of your business, but once it's out there, People see that, and you have to care about your reputation as a business owner. And I had to sit there, like, how important is my art style? I mean, I guess what the cosplay photography thing is really more important than, say, the regular stuff I do. That's dumb. I know that's dumb. It shouldn't even be like that. Hey, man, it's your camera. It's your art. It, but I I let that suffer. Like, I understand where I am as as a business owner. I understand where I am, and I understand that there, there are things I have to work on and be better about. See, I'm different. I I personally, if they paid, hey, man, if you want me to Photoshop eagles in the background and uh, burning candles in the front or whatever, fine. If that's what you want, as long as you I pay know, for I, it. I get that. I yes, I that's care. what they pay for, but then they're going to put it out there. Even if your name is not on the work, they're going to put your name on the work. And that person is going to talk you up like you were a king saving them uh, or a savior saving them from drowning because you delivered some crazy mess because you have to be a, a passionate person and want something as crazy as probably what you're just trying to describe or what I'm describing. You have to be that kind of person. So someone that did that for a person like that is going to talk you up. I would love to do it. Just give me five stars on Google, please. I would try to get a five star review out of that person. I'm going to take the money I made for them to put back in the business. I don't, you're like, hey, that's great. Thank you. Well, I mean, I'm in the business of making my customers happy. But that's just me, though. I'm different. That's why That's why we're here. I know right, you are a little right. more artsy right. than I am. Right, I'm a right. little more business than you are. But that's, right. that's why we're here talking no, it you're, out. No, you're right. We're here talking it out. And I realized I made the mistake. But And you're right. If the client wants eagles and candles in the background or whatever, just do it just take a name off it and do it but for some reason i just let my pride and my artistic integrity which to be honest when it comes to business should not matter um get the best of me and i messed up with a client because i wasn't happy with the work i was producing um and that's just me that's just me i have to learn marcel's lesson to just no, take the money no. and run. Take the money, <laughs> no, give you, them the you, bad crack lesson. You, you do it the way you want to do it, man. I ain't here to take, teach anybody how to do anything. I'm just here to teach you, you know, what to no. how to think, I guess, to just think of all your options. Think, think it through. To, to understand what kind of business you're trying to run. Are you really in business or is this just a hobby or whatever the case may be? That's that's what and I, I think the thing was I just didn't think it through because again, this happened like I got sick, I was like working at the time and they was giving me crap. So I was already under my own pressure and then you got client work on top of that. You just messed up with one client and then you got a week later another client literally asking the same thing the other lady was asking for and you just I messed up, and, like, my November in business was not good. It was a lot of learning lessons oh. that I needed to learn. I didn't know about all that, man. Okay. Um, I mean, but it's fine. Like, 
No, I mean, I yeah, it's fine. Know. This is, hey, man, you you can't let these hold you down too long. You know what I mean? Trust me, I've got a story, too. I've got stories. I didn't mess up so much stuff. But, you know, you just kind of take it. You keep going. Consistency will get you so far. It, it does. Life. It does. Very far. Yeah, consistency will get you far in life, uh, whether it's with clients, YouTube, podcasting, whatever. Life, whatever. Yeah. Um, and I agree with you. I can't wait to hear your story because I'm like, like when do you I've been on your shoes when uh, you know what I've been on your shoes and I've seen you mess I've seen up mess, I've messed up stuff most stuff can be fixed in post but you can't fix customer service in post you cannot fix customer service in post but some mistakes you make in production can be fixed in post no that's true that's true that's true um what what, what where did you make mistakes at so I made I made mistakes especially in the beginning uh not by 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 doing things I didn't want to do like I said, I've shot a lot of stuff, especially when I first started. I got out of college. I literally bought a camera. I can't remember how I got the money. I think I sold my car at the time, and I bought a camera and something. That I can't remember. But anyway, in that time frame of having that camera, I was shooting everything. Like, I, yeah, I was shooting a lot of stuff. And uh, and in that, there was a process, a time when I had to stop doing that because I was in clubs. I was in people's houses. I was in venues, wedding. Like, I was just all, at places I didn't even want to be. I was like, all right, I'll take a hundred bucks. I'll take fifty dollars. You paying for some gas? So I can eat. Fine, I'll do it. I ain't doing nothing. I'm sitting at home. But um, yeah. It, um, but in particular though, in particular, I had a client that um that I honestly don't even have a good ending to. I actually got a client years ago when I very first started the company. When I've like I like very first, I had to get an LLC just to even collect the money from this client. And because that's how I'm like, and that speaks to how big of a client it was too. It was a nice client here in Georgia. Like mm. we've all heard of him. It was I don't even know how it landed in my lap, which is a whole nother topic of it's all in who you know. It's not what you know. Clearly, because yeah, I messed this up. So right. it's not what you know. It's who, it's who you, you know. Because know, this was a great client. It, it was my first time making actually made five figures off this job. I actually made a little bit of money. I was parking cars and didn't even know what to do with this check. Congratulations. Th uh, thank you. Although I had no clue what I was doing. So anyway, I had to shoot these, mu these not music, I was about to say music videos. You know, they kind of were, felt like it. Um, but I shot everything, so I kind of approached it like it was a music video. They were training videos. So they were like workout videos, right, for a company. Oh, were, I remember that. Yes, they were workout videos. So this company needed workout videos for their employees. I was so, there helping you. Yes, I think, yeah, you were there, right? A few people. I never figured were. out what happened with that. Nothing cause... happened with those videos. So <laughs> so uh, they paid me and everything. And I feel, I genuinely feel bad because the people that were great. The lady that connected me was great. And the lady I worked with, my contact when I got there was great. The guy that referred me to the girl that worked there was great. Was, yeah, I remember all, those people. They were all, all nice and bubbly, and they were so happy to we, do it. We shot them. We shot them with some 60Ds. I rented some from Aperture here in Atlanta. Um, we shot them all, but when we got when I got to post, I just really had no clue what I was doing. So I started off hiring a friend of mine. I hired her to edit some of them. But she, like, was so lazadaisical with it. And I was like, all right, look, I got a, you know, here's, a, like, some money. I can't even remember the money. but, but I'm it, not going to say it names, wasn't a, but. It wasn't a lot, but I thought it was a lot. It felt like a lot to me. But anyway, but, um, yeah, I was like, hey, can you edit these? And she was like, I can only do it on Sundays. I'm like, all right, well, I mean, they need them quicker than, you know. And I'm like, all right, that's cool. At first, I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. Sunday, Saturday, whatever day you can do it, do it. You right. know, but uh, apparently she literally. Only touched them on Sunday and could only edit a little bit of piece at a time because I'm asking like, all right, hey, what's the update? You know, you can only edit on Sunday. I call Monday. Hey, what's an update? And it's just put on the timeline. I'm like, all right, so you didn't even. Oh my god, you didn't I even chop these up at all. Is. So that was my first cuss out from the company. They were like, all right, so what's the hold up? And I'm like, all right, I messed up by hiring out. I should have just been doing this myself. So then I try to do it, and hey, it's a lot because we had like three or four cameras. I'm trying to match the audio to the sound and, and going back, it really shouldn't have been that difficult. It should. It really been. shouldn't have been, but have been. I made it difficult by you just not liking it. editing and overthinking it and not having a process down for editing. And I don't really care for editing. Um, so, but you were a one man band at some point you got to edit, right? Yeah. At some point, uh, recently I've been hiring out my editing. Just, it comes with trial and error. 
I found somebody that's actually pretty good and a cheaper uh, source to doing it. Now I just, for some projects I give to them. But um, yes, anyway, that project never got finished. Like never. Like I think I, but, but I will say, like you said, communication goes two ways. So I would email them and they would take literally weeks to get back to me. And I was like, all right, y'all. So how I do you feel about that this? Part. How do you feel about this edit? Is this okay? And they would, I, I checked the timestamps. This you emailed them 22 days ago. I'm like, all right. And they just now getting back to me. I'm like, okay, cool. And it, and it just took a minute. It took so long that they don't even work there. They stopped working there before we could even finish putting it all together. Oh my I God. think the last email was me sending something out to them and I never got a response back. I think they were like moving out the company or something. Oh, wow. But I got paid. And I don't say that to say like, screw them. I got paid. I'm just, I guess the good thing is I did get paid, but and it's unfortunate. Front. Yeah. And they paid me up front too, which is wild. Very wild. Wow. And they never got shit out of it. I'm sorry. They, didn't they get, never it, got they, nothing uh, from I, it. I delivered a few of them, but not all of them. There oh, were okay. a number of videos that should have been t- delivered, but I just, I never got around to all of them. That's and I don't even know how I didn't get them done. I Just not ready for something that was throwing you away. Just immature, not ready. You know what? I, that uh, That's something um, that I'm glad you brought up because your maturity level, not necessarily your maturity level, but your readiness for a project will determine how that project goes. And like yeah. I said, you had a big project, your first big project, which I actually didn't even know that um, yeah. at that time. I knew it was a big project. I just I didn't know the numbers or whatever. I just knew what I was making and what I was doing, and that was it. Um, and I remember constantly asking you about, like, hey, what's going on, what's going on? And you tell me bits and pieces of stuff, but I never, I just moved on because it's so funny that that didn't work out for you. But that same project I helped you work on, I was doing PA work for them, helping setting up, breaking down cameras, carrying equipment up and down the elevators, uh, dumping memory cards, only making like, I think you paid me like $10 an hour or something like that, which I, I remember. Yeah, whatever. Um and I end up doing way more than you asked me because that's just what I do. But I use that money that I made from that shoot with you to buy my first camera and my laptop that I used to start my business and just hit the ground running from that point. Um, and then learn I don't know chef, anything about business. That's so crazy. That is so crazy. Yeah, it's so crazy. I actually got other stories. But we are unfortunately out of time. Someone just pulled up, and I got to go get groceries out the car. I, I think that should be a video series you do, just the, the horror stories you have. I that think a lot be, of people could just learn people from could that. learn from that. They really can, man. Um, yeah, you're right. You can break it down. Like, hey, this is what happened. This is what's expected. This is what I expected. Who's to blame? Which most of the time is going to be you. Like, by default, like you said earlier, I think yeah. it's the business owner. It's your fault for not yeah. it uh, not being able to communicate clearly with your client like it's rarely i feel like the client's fault unless your client like runs up on you with a gun and or starts punching you and sl- uh, cutting you with a knife or something. other than that i think it's going to be your fault you know i don't personally believe that uh I, and we both work retail um okay you're right you're we right both work retail some people are just terrible some people are just terrible some people are just terrible but no, when it's right. your people business you got all those things like uh, I don't know if you worked in a grocery store before and you got to sit there and smile yeah. with your uniform on and literally get spit at and you still like, thank you, have a nice day. Thank you for shopping with us. You have to kind of have that mindset with your business. Uh, yes a and little no. Bit. I mean, well, we can I'm get to that. that. We can get into that more later. Yes and no. Yeah. Yes uh, and no. You know what? Let's just leave it at this. Topic for another video. Keep you watching. We're going to talk about that. We will. Um, again, you all just been bouncing business and art. The content be bop. My good buddy Mark Leary is here with Blurlography. I uh, remember everybody, no starving artists. Get paid for what you do. Uh, know your worth. And be sure to check out the comp- content, thecontentbebop.com. Go sign Go Oh, sign you got a up. website already? Uh, it's not up yet. Okay. But it's coming. It is coming, and it will be there, be there soon. It will be here soon. Check out. Go to the website. Um, download our free uh, checklist. Uh, for getting started with your podcast or your YouTube channel, uh, whichever of your choice, or download both of them, whichever the case may be. And we will catch you on the next one. Peace. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Like, subscribe. To both our channels. Both our channels. Yeah, you got to get in the habit of doing that. I know, I'm new to this.